All right, and welcome to day six. So um, you may be looking at the thing that we're going to be designing today and thinking, wow, that thing is insanely complex. How in the world are we going to do something like that with only a couple weeks under our belt? And uh, it's actually not as bad as you would think. Uh, a lot of that stuff is just kind of fine detailing that's easy to do once you get the basic shape in place. So uh, we're going to learn a few tips and tricks to get us to where we need to be. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we need to do is shape the profile of this, which is an L. So I'm going to click on front, sketch, normal, and we're going to draw our L. Um, so I'm going to use my line here. I'm going to start the origin as always. I'm going to draw this up. This is actually going to be pretty big, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Um, and I'm going to back out a little bit. There we go. All right, so again, line tool. I could just hit L if I wanted to. Go up here, about six-ish, draw across about one ish down make sure that you use this auto inferencing so everything's perpendicular and aligned with the origin there we go all complete <clears throat> now i'm going to dimension it dimension the bottom first otherwise you get these wonky shapes so three and six the thickness needs to be uniform throughout so we're going to choose this and this and make sure they're equal and then we're going to dimension this to one so now it is of uniform thickness and it is fully dimensioned, fully constrained, fully defined. So I hit the check there. It's ready to go. We're going to go back to a little bit of a different view, select that guy, and we're going to extrude. We're going to do a symmetric extrude, which means that it's going to bisect the front plane um, instead of going in one direction or the other. And that extrusion will be six inches. So there's our part. Now extrude it. I hit check to accept and let's get to a better view. There we go. So next thing we need to do is we need to add a circle and punch a hole through this thing. So we're going to spin her around, click on here, sketch, normal. Now, um, you'll see that this kind of rotated this way. I'm actually going to flip it around. That's where I want to be. Um, and I'm going to use the origin again to auto inference. And I'm going to have a center point circle. I'm going to go here. And I'm going to auto inference my way up, draw a circle. And I'm going to dimension this to one inch and it may jump on you like that if it does just get rid of it it may not have picked up the auto inferencing and so i'm going to try it again and you don't really actually have to go very far um let me dimension this again we'll see if it works this time there we go you'll notice it's right on that plane that line is intersecting that which is what we want now this is not where it needs to be it needs to be up here so what we're going to do is we're going to dimension from the center point and from the top edge and that dimension is going to be if it's 1.5 if i can find where it is find where it is yeah 1.5 so i'm going to dimension here here and 1.5 and that should jump it up there we go fully defined just like we like i'm going to hit check here um, by the way, you'll notice I use the center point instead of the edge um, because the edge to this line is different than the center point to this line. So that's, again, design intent. Important to pay attention to what you're doing. Otherwise, this hole would be way down here and it would interfere with some of the other parts we're creating. So we're going to check that. We're going to extrude. It's going to be remove. And we're going to choose through all. And we will accept that. And now we have our hole. Now, why I choose through all? Why not just blind? Because I could do blind. And it would seem that it got rid of all of it. Well, if I was doing this in a way where I might change the width of this part, if I did blind, then it would not go all the way through. Remember, design intent is important. So if the part is being extruded and it gets longer, then I want that hole to always go through the whole piece, regardless of how big it becomes. So important to pay attention to these small details because they will make your life a lot easier later on. So now that we have that, now we have a tricky part. So we're going to create a little notch here in the front that's partially circular. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to create a sketch and I'm going to go normal. And um, so this is one that uh, I personally had a difficult time with playing around with. And um, there's a couple different ways you could do it. You could draw a rectangle and all this other stuff. But um, to get fully constrained, um, what I found uh, has been the best is a center point arc. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click center point arc. I'm going to mouse over this. And by the way, if you don't have center point arc, remember you can click that and center point arc. So I have it. I'm going to go here to the origin 
and I'm going to use that as my auto reference. So let me see if I can get it to auto reference. Come on. Uh, let's see. There we go. All right. That's what I want. All right. So I'm going to go down here somewhere. I'm going to click. I'm going to draw out. And you'll see that it's telling me how big that circle is going to be. And it's actually going to be about half an inch. Um, so we'll kind of keep it there. And I'm going to click once. And it's going to draw an arc like that. And then I'm going to click again, and there's my center point arc. Now, the nice thing about this is it automatically aligns it to the origin. So it makes it already, in some ways, constrained. Now, what I need to do is use my line tool. And I'm going to draw a line from here to here. Now, if I try and play around with it, I might be able to get perpendicular, which is great. If not, then I will show you how to add perpendicular here in just a second. So this one I'm just going to kind of draw out here. Okay. Um, in order to make sure that this is perpendicular to this, I select them and I choose perpendicular. Now you'll notice that the whole thing got a lot bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and dimension this. And I said it's going to be a 0.5. And it's still too tall, though. This should actually be 0.5 as well. And the reason why is I also have to make the midpoint of the arc the midpoint of this piece. So I'm going to click here. Oops. Still in the mention, I'm going to click here, click here, and I'm going to choose midpoint, and that should lock it into place. Now, you'll see that it didn't. It's probably because I didn't draw my line straight, so let's try it again. I'm hitting Control-Z to undo. We're going to try our center point arc again. I'm going to auto-reference from there, and click, draw, and I'm going to try to get as close to parallel as I can. And there we go. And I'm going to use my line tool and I'm going to draw this straight down. And I'm going to use my line tool and draw this. Straight down. And we'll see if I can get this thing to dimension properly. So I'm going to go perpendicular and perpendicular and... Now I'm going to go here and here and midpoint and dimension this guy to 0.5 and I have a problem. So this is an over constrained issue. So there's something that that dimension that I gave it is interfering with. So let's go back a step and we'll try it again. A lot of this stuff too, guys, is, is trial and error. Um, I know that it's one of those things that you're like, God, I can't get it to constrain. I can't get it to work. You just have to have patience sometimes. And, and not all the steps are clearly defined in, in the documents. And that is on purpose. It is part of what we want to do is to make sure that um, is to make sure that we understand how to use these different tools. And, and again, a lot of it's just playing around with this, just practice. So... It may be that I'm not getting that line on the edge properly. Uh, there could be a number of different things that are going on here that are not working well. So we're going to try it again. Do perpendicular. And this one, if I show constraints, I got perpendicular there, but not here. So I'm going to go here, perpendicular. And then I'm going to dimension this guy to 0.5. And you'll notice that one is already fully constrained. Um, so I'm going to click here. Oops. I'll click here and midpoint and midpoint. Boom. Done. There we go. So it took a few tries, but um, this is the constraints that you should see in order to make everything work. Um, but that's what it should look like. Um, by the way, when you see on the image, if you see a white dot like that, that means it's been referenced by something. There's something that is using that point. And so that should be a hint for you if you see that in an image on the document that you see a white dot like that. It's been referenced even though there's no line there. So um, just keep that in mind. But again, trial and error. You notice it took me three or four times to get it. And I've practiced this a number of times. So sometimes it can just be a little bit fiddly depending on exactly where your mouse moves or something like that. So don't get frustrated. Just keep trying. Keep replaying it if you have to, but you'll get it eventually. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that. And I'm going to select my little piece here. And I'm going to extrude. And we are going to go through all. And it's going to be a remove. So if I look at it, there it is. 
and I'm going to hit accept. And there's my notch, just like I like it. And you'll notice that I have a little line here, just like I have in the drawing. So everything is good and copacetic. Now, the next thing they tell you is to add a what's called a, uh, a fillet or an arc around the corner here. So let's do that. And I create a sketch. And again, this got to rotate this guy. He did not rotate where I want it. All right. So you can sit here and play around with arcs all day long because it says draw an arc. Um, and there's a number of different ways you could try to do it from the center point here and all that. And it's just going to mess with you. Instead, there's actually a really cool tool called Sketch Fillet. And Sketch Fillet allows you to actually create that arc that you want from point to point. So um, what I'm going to do is <clears throat> do my sketch here. And make sure I got this selected correctly. There we go. Um, and of course, now it's not one to work for me. All right, so I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to use this line here, this line here, and that line there. And now I'm going to sketch my fillet and I should be able to, there we go. And it says it wants a 1.5 um, radius corner. And so that's good. So boom, that one's done. And now I'm going to click one here and one here. And that one should also be 1.5 so good done so what I did is the use tool there to use these outside edges um, and that creates the fillets there and then I'm going to accept this and I'm going to select that and select that and I'm going to extrude remove through all and it's gone so <clears throat> that's one way of doing it you can actually do fillets in this three-dimensional view which they're going to show you later so um, if you can't get that it's not the end of the world. There's an easier way of doing it. So there's my rounded corners. And now I need to do a counter bore. So I'm going to click on here, sketch, and I'm going to go normal again. And I need to do a counter bore around this. So again, I'm going to try to auto inference. So I'm going to use the center point of that. So I want it concentric, right? So concentric means that the center points are the same. So I'm going to click that line there, and I'm going to dimension this to 1.5 is what we want. And I'm going to hit accept. And then this counterboard needs to be a quarter inch deep. So I'm going to select this right here. Notice how if you select the wrong thing, if I just select this, then it won't do the same as if I select this. Okay, so I want to make sure I click in this face and it highlights the whole ring. Otherwise, I will get funky things when I try to do it. So... Uh, 0.25, and let's see, it's a remove, so we go that way, and accept, there's my counter bore, just like I need. So a counter bore is like if you have a screw head that's sitting in here, so it's not poking up out, it sits down deeper into the material, so that it doesn't stick out and interfere with other things, so maybe there's a shaft or something coming through here, and <clears throat> we need to make sure that it does not interfere. So now that I've got my counterboard done, I need to add those little triangular shapes here, these gussets. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add new planes. So um, believe it or not, those three planes that you see, the top, front, and right planes, are not the only planes that you can have. You can create planes using this tool. So I'm going to click on plane, and I'm going to choose which plane I want it to be an offset of, and we're gonna use a front plane, and you'll see that adds plane one there. And then the offset should be 1.75 inches away. And I'm gonna accept that. And so all that did is it now created a plane offset from the front plane that I can now draw things on. So if you're like, how in the world do I sketch something in midair? You just add a plane, tell it where it should be, and then start sketching on that plane. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do is now select that sketch or that plane, sorry, and create a sketch. And we're gonna go here. I'm gonna get kind of this side view angle here. 
Um, and again, you'll remember that I showed you the use tool earlier. We're going to use that again. So this is the use tool and I'm going to click on this line here and this line here. What that does is it puts those lines exactly where they should be here on this as well. So everything's lined up properly. You notice they're fully dimensioned because these are all fully dimensioned. So it locks everything into place. And then I'm going to draw a line. Now, again, if you're playing around and you're like, oh, well, there's already a point here. I'm going to draw here to here. Remember, these lines are already fully constrained. So it's not going to like that. Um, we actually need to cut them short. So we're actually going to start kind of somewhere in here and draw our line like this. So we do want them to connect but we just don't want them to connect with the ends because otherwise, if you do that, you will run into issues. Now, um, <clears throat> I need to fully define this uh, and I need to make sure that the sizes and everything are right. So first of all, I need to trim off this excess. I don't need it, it's just gonna get in the way. So I'm gonna hit trim and I'm gonna click on that and she's gone and that and she's gone. And now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dimension this back end here to three inches. And I should be getting close to fully constrained. The last thing I need to do is go here to here and go here to here should be one inch and boom. Now I am fully constrained. Now you'll notice again, if I click on the side edge, it didn't like it. So I click on this point because it's already been used. So it's auto inferenced. Um, so that makes sure it's locked into place. So I now have my gusset. So uh, <clears throat> I'm now going to extrude that symmetrically on this plane. So I'm gonna accept that sketch. I'm gonna click on it. I'm going to extrude symmetric. And this guy needs to be one uh, half inch. So we're going to do 0.5. And there it is. So one of those little uh, gusts is done. We now need to do the other one. So we could go and create another offset plane and sketch it and all that, but there's a much easier way of doing this. So remember, this piece is symmetrical. Right, so symmetrical means it's similar. If you draw a line right down through here, which conveniently is the front plane, then we'll have the same features on this side as we will on this side. So <clears throat> instead of sketching the whole thing, we're just going to use the symmetry tool right here. So mirror, click that, and it's going to say entities to mirror. So um, we're going to instead of doing a part mirror, we're going to do a feature mirror because you'll notice this is all one part right now. So I want a feature mirror. So I'm going to choose extrude six. And it's easier just to click it from here instead of going in here because you want to make sure you get all parts of the extrusion. Um, so I always just go in here and select it and, and make sure that you don't run into any issues. Mirror plane is going to be the front plane. I'm going to click on that. Boom, there it is. Already in the correct position, mirrored exactly, precisely the way it needs to be. So I'm going to click on the check here and we are good. There's our part. So the rest of it, again, is just detail work. So um, hopefully you found that that's not too terribly complex at this point. Um, but we're going to look at fillets, which are rounded edges, and chamfers, which are kind of a cut off or angled edge. So um, first thing we want to do is we want to um, take out these fillets that we sketched earlier, and we're going to use a fillet tool to do it for us. So we're going to go back to, which one was it? This one right here. And we're going to select both of those and we're going to delete them. So now we have our sharp corners again. So again, I just clicked on the two of them and I right clicked and then I chose delete. So this is now square. We don't like it square. We want to use the fillet tool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on fillet and we're going to click on the edges here, here, oops, wrong edge, there. That's what we want. And we want a 1.5 inch radius, and there it is. So as you can see, that was much easier than transitioning the lines and all the other stuff that we had to do for the last one. So I'm just gonna click on this edge here, Fill it, 
1.5. There it is, rounded. Now you notice, depending on what, it's going to remove material from the edge that I click on. So I clicked on that long edge here instead of clicking on the front because it then thinks it needs to remove material from the front. So that is the fillet tool. Now we want to chamfer the circles here. So what we're going to do is we're going to chamfer this edge and this edge. So we're going to click on that one and that one, and we're going to chamfer. And you'll notice that it now has a little bit more of a rounded look to it. And I may not have selected the proper entities. So let's go back and try this again. So it needs to be a point. Uh, I did select them right. I had too much of a chamfer. That was the problem. So select those. You'll notice that that's a pretty big chamfer. It's actually going to be 0 0.06. And that looks much better. There we go. So that should look much more like your drawing. And you'll see that it just kind of rounded that out a little bit, but it's at an angle. So um, fillets are more for cutting off edges. This is for more for rounding out circles and shapes uh, like that. So um, <clears throat> that is how we do that. All right. So for this last part, they want us to add a little... Um, slot to our L bracket, um, a quarter inch uh, by quarter inch flange that goes around this guy here. So again, we're getting back to this arc, which is kind of a tricky thing. And so we're gonna sketch here, I'm gonna go normal. Um, I actually like doing this from this view, just I, it's easier for me, but you know, do whatever you want, um, as long as you get it to be fully defined. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to use this entire thing here. So that gives me plenty of lines to work with. I mean, you don't have to, you could just use these and the edges, but why not? It doesn't matter if you have a few extra lines. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go back to my center point arc again, and I'm gonna auto inference from here, from the origin, just like I tend to do. I'm gonna click here, draw it out here. Now, you may be thinking, what should be the radius of the circle? Well, if you know that this one is 0.5 and it's a quarter inch offset, what should it be? 0.5 plus a quarter inch, 0.75. We'll get to that in a second because we're going to bump this thing down. But first, we need to draw some lines as well. So I'm going to draw this line here. And if I can get it to per go perpendicular, awesome. If not, I will force it to do that in a minute. So draw my other line here. And for whatever reason, it worked. But remember, if you couldn't get it to go perpendicular, then you could just click here, click here, and then perpendicular. And then same thing with this one here and here and perpendicular. Um, now, these two circles are concentric. Remember, it's just a quarter inch offset. So I'm going to click on here and I'm going to click on here and I'm going to choose concentric. And boom, it bumps it down exactly where it needs to be. Now things are starting to kind of shape up the way we want. We also know that this side and this side need to be equal, right? Because it can't be offset one way or the other. They have to be the same as each other. Um, so you notice that little dot moved down. Now, I need to dimension this. If you remember, if you remember, it was a quarter inch. And I had to use the points here rather than here because I didn't draw a line. Could have drawn a line and then dimensioned the line, but it's just one more feature that I don't necessarily need in order to make things right. So you'll see that, okay, I've got most everything fully dimensioned except for this guy. So again, I'm going to go here and it should be 0.75. Boom, fully constrained. And that is the way it should look. And so I'm gonna go ahead and accept that. And we need to extrude it up. So we're going to go here, extrude. This is gonna be an add. And it's going to be, if you remember, a quarter inch. And ta-da, nice and neat. Now, the reason why they highlight the fact that on the document there's a little square here um, is because if I would have drawn that line, as I mentioned, you would see the line transposed here. So I could have done that um, and added this, but it wasn't necessary. But if you were having difficulty constraining, that was just a hint that, hey, you could also draw a line here to make things a little bit simpler for yourself. So, um, but there is our flange. Now, the last thing that they talk about is adding some 
chamfers and uh, different kind of features to this. I'm not going to show you all of them. I just do want to kind of give you a couple little tips here. So if I can go here and click here, then what they're telling you to do is basically kind of play around with this. You know, 0.06 is what they used on some of the other ones. That's pretty small. So maybe we'll do 0.1. Um, and it gives you a little bit of a chamfer. And, you know, again, 0.2 is the default, which is pretty substantial. Um, but you can just play around with that and you'll see it does all this shaping for you, which is kind of cool. You know, so I can go here, I can grab that edge, that edge, and that edge, and so and there, and then I can go here. And wow, look at that. Now it's all nice and symmetrical because, again, we use that mirror tool. So you can go and play around with those, select the edges as much as you want. Um, and you can select multiple edges at the same time, or you can do them a few at a time just to play around with them. But just play around with the chamfer uh, tools and try to make it look as close as you can to the drawing. Um, so maybe I'll go here and go with that guy. And it's just doing that one edge. It doesn't like that. Um, so play around with it. Um, see what you can get done. And um, there we go. Rounded that guy out a little bit. So mine's rounded a little more at the top. Uh, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, so just play around with the, the fillet and chamfer tools and just see, you know, kind of what you can do with these shapes and how you can play around with them and work with them and make them similar to what you're dealing with in the image. So you'll notice that in this case, I did point 0.1, and that's a lot closer to what you see in the image. Uh, so you can play around with it as much as you want, but just make sure you include a few of those for the diagram. All right. Hope you enjoy this one and we'll see you tomorrow.